Okay, <clears throat> here's a concept for you. The cadet rifle, or cadet carbine, or cadet pistol. But, basically, in order to understand this, we have to first talk about three things. Fundamentals of marksmanship, battery of arms, and cost of ammunition. These are all very important foundations before you uh, can understand the concept of the cadet carbine or rifle or pistol. Fundamentals of marksmanship are the basic how-to for anyone to be able to consistently put rounds on a target at a range. <clears throat> they include things like breathing, sight picture, holding the rifle uh, or firearm properly, holding it consistently, things like this. Now, what happens is if you have better control, or if you have better natural talent, this comes easier. If you have worse national natural talent, it comes harder. But the fundamentals, if, if you can get that and you can practice that, then you can theoretically put a round or a group of rounds on target every time. Now said rounds may be spread out sporadically or If you have a lot of talent and some uh, decent firearms and a lot of practice, they may be really close together, well grouped. But you have to practice the fundamentals before you can get into the more advanced shooting. Now, <clears throat> battery of arms is another important one. These are the controls on your firearm. When you're dealing with large militaries or large organizations or very, very, very successful commercial products, the battery of arms for one particular design becomes important for people outside of that organization to know before they get into said organization. For instance, the 1911 battery of arms, the M16 battery of arms, the Kalashnikov battery of arms. These are fairly standard across the board. But if you don't know them and you go from a Kalashnikov to an AR, it kind of messes things up. Or if you're used to shooting Glocks and then are handed a 1911, that can seriously mess you up. Now, the next important concept is cost of ammunition. Some ammunition costs more than others. And in this case, that's one of the cheapest rounds out there. Whereas other ammunition Is significantly more expensive and some of times it's ridiculously expensive so all those being said what is the cadet rifle well let me show you and go over this Okay, <clears throat> the cadet rifle. The name is actually British in origin. And what they did was they started off by taking some of their rifles and setting them up to fire the 22 long rifle rimfire cartridge due to low cost. That was the primary thing. These are pennies 
on the dollars of other rounds. You can get a lot more of these for the same cost of a single uh, round of any other round. They have the added benefit of very little recoil, very little mass. They don't go very far, so you can set them up on small ranges. Much safer to use. Okay. Now, what they did was, with their full power rifles, they took the stocks and receivers and converted them to fire the smaller round. What that meant was these new rifles had the same battery of arms, the same controls. So if I got <clears throat> some 18 year old who's just going to military academy, never fired a firearm before, but his family's expected to serve in the army, well, hand them one of these and Four years later, it will be the same uh, controls as the full power uh, or intermediate caliber uh, firearm that they're going to be expected to use as an officer in military service. So, same stocks and the receivers and the same battery of arms. Now, what do they change? Well, they change the internals to fire the 22 long rifle as opposed to a intermediate caliber, a pistol caliber, or a rifle caliber. Hold on a second, I'll show you some stuff here. But to give you an example of one that I have in stock here, let me do this. The rifle is clear, although it's a plinking carbine, no magazine, no ammunition, but Beretta contracted out the ARX-160-22 to be a 22 blowback version of their uh, ARX-100 and 160. They're hoping to sell the 100 and the 160 to commercial or commercially to police departments, to other military forces. The 160 was adopted as the official round or the official rifle of the Italian military. Now, 100 semi-auto only, 160 select fire full military here we have the 22 version now they contracted this out to umarix who also happens to currently own walther and specialize in air guns and plinking rifles little 22s little air guns stuff like that so Give me a second and I'll start showing you some insides. Okay. <clears throat> YouTube doesn't allow us to actually show assembly or disassembly of firearms anymore, so... Also, it makes it a lot easier to just cut and splice this back together and fiddle with stuff. So, we have here the 22 blowback and for comparison we have the locking receiver or the locking uh, bolt and bolt carrier group from a Kalashnikov pattern carbine. So recoil slash uh, return spring up here, recoil slash return spring over here, charging handles, magazine and I threw this one in here for something comparable, but we'll get back to that for a second. And the Kalashnikov style magazine. Now, <clears throat> Blue Mag, Blue Mag. These are loaded with snap caps. These are not live ammunition. These are never loaded with live ammunition. As soon as they are designated Blue Mags, they are restricted to only 
snap caps and we do not load them with live ammunition ever. So here we have the lower. We have the safety, the trigger and hammer assembly. We have the end cap for the recoil spring. We have the bolt carrier, the bolt, the bolt face, the extractor, the charging handle. We have recoil spring, the bolt carrier, the bolt, the hammer back there, or the uh, firing pin, and the extractor. Now, <clears throat> in the receiver there is an ejector, and in the receiver there is also an ejector for the Kalashnikov. Now, let's take a look at the bolt faces. This little uh, discoloration in there, that's the firing pin. Push it forward, strikes the rim of the uh, actual 22 round, making an indentation, theoretically firing off the uh, round. That is the extractor that claws over the side of the, the rim of the cartridge so that once it fires off, it holds it as the uh, backwards pressure. Remember, Newtonian physics, for every action, an equal and opposite reaction, pushes the uh, round, pushes the brass casing backwards till it hits the ejector and kicks the round out the ejection pore. Okay? This met, mates up with a slot in the uh, upper receiver for this particular design that allows it to stay stabilized in place and these rails match up with similar rails in the upper receiver so then this just goes, this is held in place and goes back and forth. Yes, you can think that something phallic if you have a dirty enough mind. Go right ahead. I don't judge. Now, <clears throat> here I wanted to show you something. This is a standard 556 five, pattern magazine. Yeah, it's not fitting in there because the magazine well in the lower has been altered as a safety precaution so that you can only load the 22 magazines and not try to jam in a full power round. So that's another safety feature built into these to protect people. And because this is all polymer molding, I can't convert this to use a full power round. Now, Kalashnikov magazine feed lines up like this. The bottom of the bolt strikes the back, pushes this forward across the feed ramp and into the chamber, loads and locks. And here we have the actual uh, bolt and bolt carrier. The spring pushes it forward. <clears throat> when it goes forward, the bolt hits the back of the barrel and spins, locking it in place. locks it in place are these lugs. This is a surface. 
strikes and travels through the uh, channel here, picks up the round, pushes it forward. All right, these are the locking lugs. When they, uh, when the bolt gets all the way forward, spins, locks into place. It's very hard to see here, but that little uh, tab sticking out, that's the firing pin. Push that forward, you can see the firing pin sticking out. Strikes the primer. Now, when this gets loaded in, we have our extracting claw. Hold on to the uh, rim of the bolt, rim of the round, and when it comes out, this groove here rides in the ejector, which kicks the round out of place. And there you go. Now, if I were to make, and just to show you how it does that, you can see this camming channel carved in there. And that affects this lug on the top. Turn it around. Gets locked in place. Push forward. Unlocks it. What happens is at the other end here, this piston cup, the gas pressure is vented off a hole in the barrel, up a little pipe, pushed up against this. Meaning that when this goes off, this is locked in place until the front is pushed, or the front of the gas piston is pushed, pushing the entire carrier back, causing this to cam and unlock. Well, blowback doesn't have that. There's nothing here for the gas pressure to push against aside from the actual inside of the case. It's much cheaper, much more efficient, much leaner. Doesn't require nearly as much machining and parts. Doesn't require nearly as heavy a mass. This is plastic, this is metal, that's metal, that's metal, and that's metal, but that's plastic. And on the back side, hey, there's a metal nut on the other side of the long bolt. So as you can see, it simplifies the manufacture of this. So the cadet version, the 16022, costs a lot less than the full price version. But because it uses the same fire control setup, has the same stock, the same controls as the full uh, sized one, you can run this, you can give this to an untrained person and teach them how to use the full power one before it's safe for you to hand them a 5.56 version. Because, like we said, 22 long rifle is a lot less powerful, a lot safer to use, especially around new shooters, than full power or intermediate powered rounds. Now, this is a carbine version. You can do, a, they can make Kalashnikov version or versions of this for Kalashnikov pattern carbines. They made them for the Enfield rifles the British used, the SMLEs of World War I and World War II fame. They had little 22 versions. You can make them for just about anything. You just have to downgrade all the power but keep all of the same controls.
Now, <clears throat> people will say, but what if we take the fire control group from a machine gun and put it in here? Well, this is the semi-auto only one. And in order to take it apart, yeah, that pretty much means you're not going to get it back together unless you have the factory jigs. And even then, all the moldings would have to be carved out, scratched out, and the whole thing would basically be destroyed in the attempt. Hate to break it to you, but you can't turn this into a machine gun. In fact, that's part of how it got imported into the country is the ATF took one of these apart and tried to make it into a machine gun and realized there's no realistic expectation that you can without completely manufacturing all new lower groups. And oh yeah, by the way, there are multiple serial numbers on here, on here, on the receiver, on the stock that all match. So if you have one set that doesn't match, anybody who knows anything about these is going to realize, uh-oh, something's been uh, changed. So, that's the whole thing about cadet carbines. You take a 22 and you build it on the same uh, stock and fire controls as a larger, more powerful rifle in order to train people on the battery of arms as a safe uh, or as a safety measure. All right, I'm out.